uh, Mr. Speaker, and I want to—I uh, I do not want to speak and repeat much of what has been said already. But this situation has got completely out of hand, as everyone knows. The situation is beyond parody because the situation we find ourselves in is not the product of any of the individuals now charged with sorting this out, but throughout the rest of the world, there is not another country whose legislators or political representatives are putting its servicemen and women through anything remotely similar to this. Those same legislators who use daily the freedom of speech and the freedom of will that so many have fought so hard to defend. Indeed, we are the only first world country that seems to take such a passive and reactive approach to anything to do with <laughs> veterans' affairs. Mr Chairman, that we find ourselves here is astonishing, baffling, embarrassing and wrong. Yeah, 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 that we can yeah, take yeah. a battlefield and all that goes into it and train hard and work hard and be the best that we can possibly be to ensure success and then have our homework marked by those whose love of this country does not wander far beyond their own bank balance yeah, is simply yeah, beyond yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. We cannot withdraw from my hat now and I accept that. That we are here is ridiculous, but we are here and we must as ever fight our way out. So what's really going on in this investigation? Our soldiers are having retired police officers who have answered the noble call of exciting new opportunities and above market rates of pay, turning up to their door with a letter summoning them to court with no warning and no idea. Access to a lawyer afterwards by the MOD, yes, but no warning from the government they represented that this, a government inquiry, is turning up. That is not good enough. No one has a problem with scrutiny. Our professionalism is what separates us from the rest. We work so hard to imbue moral courage in our men and women, mental strength and resilience to precisely get these decisions right in warfare. And the truth is, by and large, we do. And when we don't, somebody speaks up. And it is dealt with without fear or favour, for we are the British Army and we are embarked on a relentless pursuit of excellence. We have a duty. I do not know how many times I must say it in this place, but I will keep going until my time is done. We have a duty to look after these people. And Mr Chairman, this is not it. This is not it. I urge the government to follow the Prime Minister's lead. Do everything you can to protect our men and women. Be proactive. Warn those of what is coming. Calm them and support their families. The time for letting veterans fend for themselves and seek out a charitable shoulder in this country for support is over. It ends in this Parliament. These are the best of us, the true patriots, the warrior generation. We owe these men and women. We owe them. Let's not let them down. Yeah.